the past and its consequences for the present. But to hear conservative white people talk about how wrong it is to live in the past is absolutely stunning, coming from people who love the past more than anything on earth. In fact, some of them love it so much they tell you they want to go back. When they say they want their country back, that is a directional reference, which by definition points to the past. And when they have taken as their political symbol in the last three years this thing called the Tea Party, which, excuse me, is a really old-ass reference, they are in no position to lecture anybody about getting stuck in the past. When you come to political rallies wearing Revolutionary War costumes, tri-cornered hats, powdered wigs, and carrying muskets, you are not in a position to tell anyone else that they need to come into the present and get out the past, because they are still in 1775. <laughs> Makes them feel good. That's what we do as a country. We do it as well as anybody on earth. Dwelling in the past. What do you think July 4th is? What do you think Independence Day is about if not celebrating and talking about the past? We didn't break away from the British last Wednesday. That was a really long time ago. But every 4th of July, man, we're setting off fireworks, eating hot dogs, eating apple pie, folks dressing in red, white, and blue, because, you know, that's a good wardrobe ballot. And, uh, <laughs> and thinking nothing of it. Because the past is fine, as long as it's a past that makes you feel like your country is the greatest country ever struck off from the forehead of God Almighty. But as soon as somebody brings up some of the uglier aspects of our past and our history and the consequences that those aspects may have for the present, that's when all of a sudden we consign history to the memory hole and decide that it no longer matters, that it isn't something we need to talk about. But what's frightening is that for the most part, white Americans, and this is something we just have to be honest about, have never wanted to talk about this. Not only now that we have a black president, not only now that we have certain outward manifestations of progress, to be sure, since the days of segregation, certainly since the days of enslavement, and since the days of the most largest aspects of indigenous genocide, the theft of half of Mexico, and the war of aggression that this country started on false pretense so as to protect land that had previously been stolen by slave owners who wanted to occupy Texas. I know that's not the way you learned it in high school, but that is the way it happened. Not only do we not want to talk about it now, we didn't want to talk about it then. You see, white folks have never wanted to talk about racism, even when the past wasn't the past, even when it was the present, even at the time. So you can go back to the early 1960s, when this was a formal apartheid country, when this country was a formal system of white supremacy. I know that's not the language that we use either, but now that's honest. That's what honest language would require us to call our country for almost all of its national existence, indeed, going back before it was a country, when it was a colony system. And even in the early 60s, when civil rights laws hadn't even been passed yet, when discrimination was legal and fully practiced all throughout in every institution and not just in the South, all over this country, even then white folks didn't think we had a problem. You can look at the Gallup polls, they'll tell you all you need to know. Look at the Gallup poll from 1963 where white folks were asked, do you think that blacks are treated equally in your community with regard to jobs and education and housing? Now we know in retrospect, it's been almost 50 years, we know the answer is no. Right? We understand the civil rights laws haven't even been passed yet. We know the answer is no. That was the year of the March on Washington. Folks don't just march on Washington in August heat, 200,000 strong, because they got nothing better to do. They do it because there's something wrong that they're trying to protest. So we know the answer to that question in retrospect is no. But when the question was asked to white folks in 1963, what do you think they said? They didn't say no. Two out of three of them said sure. Black folks have fully equal treatment in all of those realms. Now, in retrospect, we can see that that is not only wrong, but like borderline delusional, right? <laughs> borderline mass racial delusion. And a year before, in 1962, when it was even more obvious, 1962, white folks were asked by Gallup, do you think black children have just as good a chance to receive a high-quality education as white children? Now, again, in retrospect, 50 Years later, we know the answer is no, but in 1962, when white folks were asked the question, 85% said yes. Wow. What does that tell you? It tells you that at no point in our history, and you can say the same about the 1930s and the 1950s, and the 1850s, even when we still had a system of enslavement, and very few white folks seem to think that was a problem. In every generation, most white Americans, and there have always been exceptions, for there have always been white folks going back to the colonial period all the way up to the present who have stood in solidarity with people of color, but by and large, white America in the larger corporate sense has never been willing to see the truth. 
and in fact have studiously denied the truth even when it was staring us right in the face. Why? Is it because we're just stupid? Is it because we're insensitive and uncaring? Well, there are people like that in every racial group, but that surely can't explain 85 out of 100 white people in 1962. Most of those people, just like most folks now, white, black, or brown, or otherwise, are good people. Not stupid, not uncaring, not insensitive. That 85% of white folks who were so wrong in 1962 and thought we didn't have a problem in terms of educational inequality were mostly functional, reasonably intelligent, mostly compassionate human beings. But here's the trick. They didn't have to know the truth. And that's why they didn't know it. 